So this video is really video zero in my basics learners section and I'm just going to do a tour of the comfy user interface. So I'll put a workflow in and this is the workflow, the a, a basic turbo workflow. I don't think there's any point in having uh, an early uh, 1.5 workflow or uh, even um, an SDXL only workflow because the, the turbos are, are faster and uh, and the, the, the recent versions are, are, are better as well. So we'll start from the left. This is your checkpoint and your checkpoints are the model that processes your prompt. So you click on this and you've got a list of all the checkpoints you have and you can pick them from this list. So you literally click on that and they'll appear. And the checkpoints go in the checkpoint folder of your Comfy UI folder and, the, and it, so it goes Comfy UI models checkpoints and they go in there and you can download them from Civit AI. So if we right click on this and we view the information it'll tell you about it there. So you get a little bit of you get a little bit of bump about it there. So that's right click view info. The next most important thing is your sampler and this is the sampler that processes the information processes it through the model and the sampler and this is a custom sampler so it's, it's like a there's lots of samplers but th this one has some um, it's like a sampler taken apart <laughs> so you can see so you can see the components so we have the scheduler which tells the sampler how many times to process your image so this one's going through eight times the denoise will come to in a moment but this is an important box here then there's your sampler. This is the this is the guts of this. This is the engine within the sampler, and it tells it how it's going to sample it. So there there are lots of different samplers. If you click down, you'll see lots of different samplers. When you right clicked on this, it will tell you which sampler to use and what's and it told us two CFG. So there's a CFG there. So we'll go through the rest of the things on the sampler itself. Add noise. Is it going to add noise to the image, which is needed for the denoise here? Because you can't you can't denoise if there's no noise. Then there's the noise seed. This is the seed the random noise is going to be made from, and it's a very important number. If you don't change anything, this seed and all the other things will always produce the same image. So this will always produce the same image. Control after generate. It can be several settings. It can go forward one, it can go down one, or it can randomise. CFG is how much it takes notice of your prompt. So it's how much it takes notice of what you type in this box. And this is the prompt box. So these two need to be talked about together, really. So this is your, this is how much notice. So if this number is high, it won't take a great deal of notice. If it is very low, it will work too hard to fit it to this and you'll probably get a poor quality image so it's best to have the CFG set to what it tells you here. So if you look in here CFG scale 2 4 to 8 steps. There you go. The other slot here is the latent image and this is the size of the patch of noise that this will produce. So this will produce a patch of noise, a, u a unique patch of noise because of this number it produce a unique patch of noise this size. This number is how many images you want it to do, the batch. You can set that to anything and it'll, if you do four, it'll do four, no, four, four images and so on. So back to the checkpoint and we have our other out, which is the clip. Now this is part of the line. So there are two lines. There's the model and there is the clip. These are two lines of information. This is the line of the model and this is the line of the conditioning. So this is the line of latent space there. So the conditioning, you've heard all about prompting. I, I has a video in this series about prompting. So here is where you type your whatever you want to see. And here is what's called the negative point prompt, but it isn't really. It's when you hit a problem later on in the process, if you've uh, got extra legs, <laughs> people with nine heads and so on, you can put what you don't want in there. But you can't put too much in there. People who put in huge negatives and uh, embedded negatives uh, 
they don't really work with STXL. Then we have the third line out of the sampler, which is the VAE, which is encoding and decoding the information that goes in and comes out of the sampler. And this is part of this model. It's baked into this model. Some VAEs are separate. I'm not going to go into that now. So here is where the image comes out. And this one has two choices. I choose the denoised output. And they're called samples. And they get processed here. This is a small box, but an important one. It's a whole model, really. And this decodes your final image. And here is where your image is displayed. This could be a preview image, or it could be a save image. If it's a preview image, it goes into your temporary folder in Comfy UI. If it's a save image, it goes into your outputs folder. Joining things up. If we want to do image to image, we don't want our latent image. So if we unplumb that, we can drag out again from our latent image. And if you pull it out and let go, a list will come up. So we've got a decode up the top right there. What we want is an encode. So you can have another empty latent you see there. And that gives us an encode. And the encode needs a VAE. Basically, you have to join up all the dots, and you can't leave any dots unjoined. So from the pixels here, if you drag out, let go, you'll get a load image. You see here, a load image. There it is, you can load an image. If you click on this, you'll just get a select, and we'll put a silly image in. There you are, a lens flare. So that is a basic guide around uh, the interface. If use this latent as an example, you're not sure where to find a node, you've got two options. Right click anywhere on the interviews interface here, and you can go add node, and then you get a big choice of nodes. Or you do if you have them loaded. I have a lot loaded, too many loaded here. If you pull out from here and go search, it will only list the nodes that you can attach to that dot. So it's the only it will only put the things that you can attach, of which there'll be a lot, but it narrows it down a bit. And then if you have a, an idea of what you want, then you can type, for example, latent upscale, then it will focus in on that and you can find. So, so that's the probably the easiest way of finding nodes, because if you pull out here, go search, It'll only put the ones in that you can attach to that dot. So, the manager. I have to assume you've managed to get the manager installed. The manager is pretty important. So when you load this fantastic workflow you got off Civit AI, it'll come up with lots of red squares here. And to correct those red squares, we can open manager and then go install missing nodes. If you want a particular model, and you don't have it, you can either go to Suit AI and search for it, or you can note the name, go Manager, Models, and then search for Turbo, and you'll only get the basic turbos. You won't get the ones of Suit AI. So it's best to go searching for the name on Suit AI. And you download them, and they'll be in your Downloads folder, and you drag them into the Checkpoints folder. More things in the manager. The manager is where you update. Another way of putting this model in, another way of putting this model in, you see this model, it's telling you where to find it. I don't know if it, if it does that. I think it does that uh, even if you don't. Um, so this link will take you to where you can get the model. So a few more. I'm sorry, this is a bit of a boring video if you know about company, but it's just for people who are completely starting. If you have got your setup here and you do a generation shall we make something um, a man with a flashlight in a spooky mine oh we put castle okay so as we got a image in here we come to this box here which is the denoise denoise is a really important box at one it will ignore this completely at zero, it will just give you this image. Anywhere in between will be a mixture between this box and this. So this is going to be 75% this box, 25% that box. 
Just to demonstrate that, we'll run it. And there we have a man in a cage. <laughs> He's to be holding a light bulb. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> if you want to save this workflow for later, you can do save and it'll save a JSON file in your downloads. And that JSON file, if you drag it into Comfy, will always produce this setup. So you can save that. The other way you can save it is to hold down control, drag over the whole lot, and you see it's gone, everything is selected. Right click and hold and save selected as a template. And it'll give you a name, which I shan't put in here. And when you go back to node templates here, you'll find what you saved. And if you go to that, it'll always put in what, uh, what you have here. So there's two ways of saving this setup. The other way is that if you save this image, if you go to temp, if you save this image and if you drag this image back, it'll always produce back into here. It'll always produce. So what we'll do, say we empty this, we'll clear this and we'll demonstrate it. So I've got rid of absolutely everything. So we'll go to our temporary folder and we see we have that image. If I drag this image into Comfy, there it is. There is everything that made that image. So it's very handy. So if you can't remember how you made an image, I do use this quite a lot. So, uh, so uh, this is quite a useful thing. And I think that covers the basics. Now, I've got a series of videos going on from this that, uh, that carry on further. But I thought I would do... I'll do one more thing, which is uh, noodle tidying. Because if you go to complicated workflow and get to tidy, you know, there's a thing called a reroute, which just pipes that purple dot around. So you can... You could you can take this purple dot around and uh, and it's just the same as coming straight from the dot. And you can do that for anything. I could, for example, run my VAE over like that. And as you see, it's a little tidier. So this is uh, keep your noodles tidy, which you'll you'll uh, find you quite enjoy doing. Okay, that's it. And um, that's the I think that's all the very basics I can think of. And uh, there's another I think four videos up as so far. I will deal with putting in extras like control nets, IP adapters, and so forth, and more about LoRa's in future videos. This is this is video zero, I think we'll say.